Here she comes. Ready, everyone? Hello. Hi. Hi. Right, Shelby, they're all on mute because they all I got them all to come in at three, and then I thought I went. Ah, okay. Really <laughs> So welcome to your virtual baby shower. Uh, thank you. I know it's hard to organize everything. Oh, you're in the baby room with all the rainbows. Yeah, <laughs> that's my nursery behind. <laughs> well done. I'm going to just start some Pastor Trudy just to open in prayer. And then okay. what, we, what we're planning to do today is we're going to be doing a quick quiz. And then we're going to be sort of asking, sort of, answering some questions and sharing some time with you and if you also want to we also want to give you an opportunity that if there's any questions anything you want to ask we've got all your ladies and friends here you can ask if you wanted to as well all right okay. thank you all right trudy you <laughs> together today and join Shimmy in this moment, Lord God, as she prepares to give birth to a beautiful baby boy. Father, we thank you that every good gift comes from your hand. Father, I thank you. Um, children are a reward from the Lord. Father, I thank you for your blessing upon her and Lakshman and upon this little one. And Father, I thank you that you've already knitted him together in Shami's womb. Lord, you have knitted him together specifically. Lord, with his characteristics, with his nature, with his talents, his giftings, and in love, Lord. And Lord, we just cannot wait to see the birth of this little one and all that you have purposed for him in his life, Lord God. Father, we just speak your blessing upon them now father god your blessing upon this little one may he know you may he come to know you may he stand apart and be consecrated to you lord god and lord god father will you just take a hold of his life lord god father as i'm sure to me and lakshman uh, have dedicated him already back to you lord god uh lord will you answer those prayers will you give them the desires of their heart and lord will you just be with them in this precious time and help them give them wisdom lord may they know the love and the support of their friends here today and, and far beyond lord god in the days to come as they seek to nurture this young one lord and um help him to live his best life in jesus name amen, amen. that's you to me love you yeah. thank you so was you expecting this are you glad that we all sort sort out something for you chummy i am i mean the biggest thing that i've missed baby shower is truly to celebrate the baby and the fellowship that's the biggest thing that i've ever missed throughout this pregnancy throughout the lockdown and it's really really nice to see everyone it's not something that i expected at all um but yeah it's, it's such a pleasant surprise and it's so sweet of all of you to make the time um to come today actually to you know throw this baby show for me thank you so much Wow, okay, this this is completely, completely unexpected. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, some of you did ask me what I wanted. I'm like, I cannot make myself ask for anything. Gifts is like, it's not something that I'm entitled to. It's not something that I expect at all, but I truly, truly appreciate it. And thank you so much for your thoughtfulness, for your generosity. I mean, I just don't know what to say. I love giving things to people, but I just, it's not the same when I ask for something from someone else. It's, it's a thoughtfulness and it's a thought that truly counts. That's why I never ask. Even when people ask me, I'm like, no, I've already got everything. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is so sweet. I didn't expect this at all. I didn't expect any of this at all. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so if you've got a pen and paper, there's 20 questions and we'll just do literally like a point for every question because adding up past 10 is a bit tricky for me these days. So we'll just keep it simple. Uh, sorry, I'm just struggling to count backwards here. That's why I'm pausing. Um, 10, 10, 10, 
I got ten as well. I got ten as well. That's a well. Pass. We pass. It's a pass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fifty percent. That's great. Um, of course, say Karina and Sonia. Did anyone else get ten? Right. Okay. That's handy. I can uh, get a prize to you two very easily. <laughs> so. As I said, I just want to warn you just to do a little preparation about, you know, sharing some time with um, Chummy. So I don't know who would like to start. One of you would like to start just to give you, Chummy, just some advice or support that you've learned, you know, when you've had your child. So who would like to start? I'm going to start from the top because I can see you, Sonia, on, on the top. So if I start with you, is that OK? OK. So just any advice? Any so, advice or anything you would like to share with her? Okay, I think um, the advice I would give was be like, don't compare your child to any other baby. Like, it really is true that every baby is different. And I think you can easily get caught up and be like, oh, what am I doing wrong? Why is my baby not sleeping? Or why are they crying all, all the time? But it really is true that they're, they're so different. Like, Tobin would never let me put him down anywhere. If I wasn't cuddling him for five seconds, he'd start crying and that's just his personality even now like he's so emotional and if anything happens he falls over he'll start crying whereas Jethro the minute he was born I could leave him there and he didn't care I could walk out the room we didn't care even now he falls over and just gets back up and starts walking so I think in the beginning I was like oh what am I doing wrong why is he not letting me put him down why is he so clingy and I think he realized and then you're like oh why is someone else's baby doing all these things right? But at the end of it, it comes down to the baby. It's, the, it's nothing you're doing wrong or, or nothing which you need to improve on. It's the baby's character. So as long as you're... I think to me, I was just like, I'll just follow my, my maternal instinct. I was like, I believe God's given us all a, a maternal instinct which we need to follow, which is, I think, better than any book. Or, I know books are useful. They have like some things we don't understand in, but... At the end of the day, I was just like, I'm, I'm not going to listen to other people. I'm just going to follow my maternal instinct at the end of the day. I think that's what I said. <laughs> Thanks, Sonia. That's wonderful. I can see Jess in the next corner. So Jess, would you like to go next? Thank you. Um, mine is probably to rest when you can. So it's sometimes it sounds impossible but it is possible even if it's just a five ten minute nap um the books usually say sleep when babies sleep but well sleep whenever you can really um yeah and just know that we are all here for you we're praying for you um work with latchman don't do it on your own um yeah and god will give you the strength amen Thank you, Jess. That was beautiful. Karina, I can see you next, so you're on. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, just picking up on the maternal instinct and work with your hubby. I did everything before Phoebe came, and I continued to do everything when Phoebe was up until Phoebe was six months old, and then I had a massive meltdown, burst out crying. And Dan was like, what on earth is wrong? And I was like, I can't do it all. And he was like, but you were doing it all. You never said anything to me. You just carried on. So I didn't do anything. So my advice would be don't do it all. Whatever your situation was with who did what chores, I do this, you do this, change it up, change it because you cannot do it all. You will absolutely do what I do, have a massive meltdown and just break down because how you were before is not how you're going to be when baby arrives. You're not going to have the energy, you're going to be so tired. All the time should be invested in just nurturing that baby and looking after yourself. House chores, they can stay there until, you know, until baby's one. You've got that one year to just be mum and enjoy it. I think maternity leave is a godsend where you can sleep you can eat you can just be mom and just have that bubble with you and baby so change it up don't do what you did before and take each day as it comes i'm a planner and i know you are too and you can't plan baby will have a routine for a week and the next week baby will do something else 
baby will like certain food one week, the next week baby won't like that food. So take each day and it comes. Well done, Karina. That's beautiful. Right, Joanna, you're next. I can see you. So you, you, you're up. <laughs> okay, so um, I would say never underestimate the power of a nap. Um, for you, for Lachman and for the baby, um, if you are ever just like, oh my goodness, this child has gone insane or you're really struggling, just just never underestimate the power of a nap. Even if it's five minutes, it can just reset everybody's day. Um, it's like, I read, I actually heard a whole sermon on this once, but, you know, when, um, when Elijah went and he did all that amazing thing on the top of the mountain where he like, you know, called out the prophets of Baal and, and all of that kind of stuff. And then he came down from the mountain after that incredible time. And he just was like, wanted to just like, just let me die, God, I'm just nothing. And then God just gave him something to eat and told him to have a nap. And he was okay again, you see? So there's never underestimate the power of a nap. Um, and the other thing I was gonna say is um, having a lockdown baby or a, a, you know, a slightly lockdown COVID weird time baby. Um, yes, you may not be able to do as much um, pre-pandemic you know in terms of like baby groups and socializing with other mums but actually if I compare my time with Edith and with Joel I feel like there's like an intimacy between me and Edith because I have been everything to her because she hasn't seen grandparents she hasn't seen other children and there's something I wouldn't change it for the world actually as much as I you know I do feel sorry for the grandparents that haven't had that like I'm actually really grateful because it's been a gift so don't ever think of what you might be missing out on if things aren't open yet like just enjoy your child because all of that will come but it's just yeah like I actually think we've been given something quite special having a child at this time that's me Well done, Joanna. That is so true. And it's that special time just to be with one another that you've actually built up that bond. So that's a real good positive. Thank you for that. Right, Anushka, you're next on my little list. So off you go. Brilliant. Okay. Well, first of all, I really want to congratulate you, Chumi, for this is such a special time. We are super excited for yourself and Lakshman. We really are and i've just got three things really quick really short the first one's a funny truth which you will find out becoming a mother makes you realize you can do almost anything one-handed so you're going to be an expert at doing stuff with one hand yeah uh, the next thing is my personal advice to you and that is to remember to take care of yourself it's so important. We know you're gonna be a fantastic mother. We know that baby's gonna lack nothing. We know that, both yourself and Lakshman, this baby's coming into a wonderful home, wonderful parents, godly parents. This child is blessed, we know that. But my advice is carve out time for yourself. It's so important. There'll be something that you like doing, you know, even if it's just once a week, the thing that you like doing, keep on doing it. Don't cut it out. It's so important. You need you time. Whatever that looks like, make sure. Because you can't pour from an em empty cup. So make sure whatever it is, yes, time with God, that, that doesn't go out the window, but there'll be something that you like doing for yourself. Keep on doing it. And the last thing really quick is um, godly words, which is motherhood is not a hobby, it's a calling. It's not something that you kind of squeeze time in for. It's what God has given you time for, okay? 
So in this whole period, God's giving you time and it's appalling. It's so important. So we're just really thrilled for you, Chimmy. But they were my three bits of advice. God bless. It was wonderful, Mishka. Thank you. Right, Catherine, I can see you next, so off you go. Well, I didn't prepare anything to say because I just want to say out of my experience because like what they've already practically said everything, you know, what I learned from mine is maternal instinct is very important. It's very easy to go by the rule books, like what we've gone through now, all the quizzes and the questions, you would have that natural, you know, instinct to say, oh, my child is supposed to start crawling at six months. Why is she not crawling? Why is he not crawling? It's very easy to start assuming that, oh, there's something wrong. But I just want to say that no two kids are the same. I mean, we all have, the kids are all, they're all unique. They all come in their ways. I mean, God has made them unique in every way. So comparison is totally out because it's very easy to say my child is not crying. Out. And when you go for all these mother's meetings, because you'll be going for your child, you'll be going to the you'll be going to the antenatal and the, and the postnatal care and all that. And it's very easy for mothers to do that. I tell you, people will compare. But you see, your maternal instinct is always the best. You know, my mother used to tell me, sleep when the child is sleeping. That's the best because when the child is sleeping, it's very easy to catch up with your homework. You say, okay, let me quickly tidy up the kitchen. Let me quickly do this. And before you know it, the baby is up again and you have to breastfeed. So sleep when the child is sleeping. That is a very handy advice because when the child is sleeping, you catch up in your own power because you need your own power naps to keep up babies the love being awake at night. So just catch your sleep. Whenever the baby is sleeping, sleeping, see an opportunity to sleep. And another thing I would say, like somebody has already said, do not do it by yourself. Chinedu had to cook when I was, I mean, he doesn't like going to the kitchen, but when I was pregnant, he had to cook. He had to do all the things he had to like. And the funny thing is they never know how much they can cook until they start cooking. Some men who say, oh, I don't go to the kitchen, I don't cook, I don't... But I was really surprised at his soup, real African soup he made. And I was like, I never knew you could cook like this. So you were hiding all this from me. So do do like, I mean, it's, it's very easy to... I want, because if you're like me, you want it perfect all the time. But it can't be perfect all the time when the child is here. I tell you, share your time with Chukmi and Lachman. Let him have a bit of the baby while you nap and do the things you enjoy doing. I mean take it one step at a time it's a lifetime thing it's not it's not just let me do it and get it it's something you have to grow with the baby i mean you the baby is growing you're also growing and you're learning every day you will learn every day some babies don't like breast milk they like bottle from their bed well let it be you just take it one day at a time that's the best advice i can give you you know it's it's never like okay like my baby is like your baby no it's unique, it's different. Just go with your baby and bring out the best in that baby because I believe God has given you that baby for such a time as this. So enjoy it one step at a time and do it together as husband and wife. That's the best advice you can give. <laughs> Catherine, that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Trudy, you're next and you're here for a reason. So you need to contribute as well. <laughs> to all this wonderful advice <laughs> you know obviously these these are ladies that have had children you know you, you're getting the best advice there and I, I think when I was sat there and I was I was just thinking I, I just felt like have confidence that God has called you to be a mum to me have confidence in that um, and as I was thinking as the, as the ladies were sharing as well I was just thinking how precious it is that we get to speak over our children we get to speak words of life and you know when you're holding that baby and you're sat and you're resting do you know what i mean and you're just bonding with that little one what a precious time to ask the lord about them what he's put in them speak those words over them and just enjoy being a mom um and you're going to be a great mom you're going to be honestly you're gonna just you know but enjoy it and um i think the most important thing is, is to love well is to love well it's not all it's about the doing it's about loving and being there um 
in the moment, enjoying it. Enjoy the journey to me. I don't really know what else to say because I haven't had children. <laughs> so, but I think that's what I would say to you, Chummy. And that was just some thoughts as the ladies were sharing that I thought, yeah, I'll just um, share those few things. Bless you. Thanks, Trudy. That was wonderful. And that is really good. Thank you. Especially when you say about the confidence. I came all the ladies are saying about the confidence in your maternal. God has given you that confidence and God has also blessed you with the child and uh, you know to me I think that was such a wonderful statement you just said about the confidence you know God wants he wouldn't entrust such, such a precious thing gift to you if he didn't want you to look after it and love it and care for it so truly that's wonderful thank you right I haven't forgotten you Anna hold down at the bottom so off you go Sorry, I couldn't work out how to mute. Um, I agree with everything that's been said so far, Bailey. Um, but I think what I was thinking about was I the beginning bit for me I found very intense. I think it was real extremes, like extremes of just joy and you're looking at that baby and you, it's just miraculous. And extreme of, oh my word, he will not stop crying. We will never sleep again. <laughs> and just those kind of extremes and it is the amazing joy and it is oh this is really hard <laughs> and i think just one of the things that you know on a second baby is this is going to change like one day this baby will sleep and 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 like everyone's been saying it is that there's obviously things you can do as a mum but there's also just this baby is going through something i've no idea what and we just you just have to endure through it and not start to kind of it can be so easy to make it a personal thing like I am failing I am not you know doing well and what everyone's been saying about confidence is is so key to just know that I am this is the direction we're going in one day this child will sleep we just keep taking little little steps um and just something I was thinking about when I was thinking about this was um about like loaves and fishes I was thinking that like we are bringing like loaves and fishes like in you know uh, feeding of the 5,000 and they they weren't bad things they were really good things like the things we do for our children are really good things but it's God who can make you know that miraculously into something that has a massive impact and ultimately you know we're 100% just trusting God that he will he will do more than we can do um and thank goodness we've got here with the picture because <laughs> you might occasionally make some mistakes and god will cover it completely so yes that's that's it is he clapping thank you and i haven't forgotten myself because i know i'm here making sure everybody says something but my bit of advice is exactly like really to have the confidence in yourself and also to remember, like I was you know, saying before, I planned everything possible. And I really, truthfully, I was totally blessed with having Ken. I had my mother, I had my mother-in-law, I had my sister, my sister-in-law. I had such a massive, big support system around me that I remember thinking, oh, it meant that I actually had time to actually breathe. But yet again, I don't think I also had time to actually bond. I'm sure our daughter bonded quicker to our daughter. Ken and Dominique bonded quicker than I did because I was like totally flummoxed by the all intensity of having to care for a child. And I remember at the time thinking, Ken will just come and take the child and he will just wander off and him and Dom will just wander around. And I was like, oh good, and I will read. So I actually took a, I don't think I bonded as quickly as I thought I would have because I was overwhelmed by the old thought of having to care for the child. So one of my advice is to enjoy it, to be confident in yourself. You know, God has given you that gift. And just like, you know, the same thing all of us is saying here, you're really blessed because I think you've got a family of people and support around you. But what you've got is God in the mints of it and I think that is always so important because he's gonna pop over he's like you know sleeping being confident but also caring about the fact that you have got lats when you have got people who care about you and don't be so hard on yourself because I think sometimes I think it's when you have a child I think 
Like Karina was saying, again, everybody expects you to do everything. No, they don't. The only thing you've got to do, feed the child if you want to breastfeed, whatever way you want, and to love the child. But I think really and truthfully, one of the blessings I think that we've got is that we know that God, children are a gift from God. So because they're a gift from God, that blessing is there. So we all we need to do is sometimes is love them. So I think I've learned, you know, throughout the years and everything that, you know, don't be so particular about trying to be perfect. You know, when I remember when people read the Proverbs 31 about the noble woman, who could be that woman? <laughs> no one could be that woman. <laughs> but I think we are, about, are meant to be, <sighs> to love our children. It's like Anushka was saying, you know, that is, it's not in a sense, you know, it's a godly, it's a, God has given us that. And I think, you know, really and truthfully, it's such an important gift. So continue, you know, to, we can't wait to meet the little one. We just can't wait to meet him in the family that God has placed him in at this time. So I just want you just to continue just to know that it's not all easy at the beginning. But the one thing that you know that God has given you the confidence and the gift of that child. And I think it's such a wonderful gift, seriously. And I haven't got a comparison, I don't compare, but I used to compare my daughter, I remember, to the fact that at one point I took her to a speech therapist because she didn't speak quick enough. And I think it's because I used to talk too much. <laughs> so she didn't have time to talk. So Kelly used to say, why are you taking my child to a speech therapist? And I remember at the time thinking, that's because I thought she should be speaking at a set time. And now Dom talks just as much as me, but I, it's just being confident in yourself and knowing that whatever they're going to get, they will see the colour they want, they will develop everything in the way that they need to be de developed, because that's God's gift. Just like all of us here, we are all different experiences of children or not having children, but we still know that God is in the midst of it. So I think you're so blessed to have us around and we are just a little touch of the people that you're going to have in your life at this time so that's from me talking too much <laughs> right but right so we've done all of our bits that we've done on this one we i've got a bit of time for you chum i don't know if you wanted to ask us any questions or anything you wanted to ask i didn't want it all about us talking to you I also feel it's quite nice for you to have this opportunity to maybe ask a question and anybody then can answer as best as they can for you. I, I don't know. I don't really have anything in particular to ask, but I don't feel like, obviously this is the first baby and it's not something that I have envisioned all along ever since I was married. A lot of people, they dream about their wedding day, they dream about having children, they have plans and this and that and everything, but I never had anything of that sort. I plan everything, I organize everything, I do everything, but there's only two things in life that I never plan. One is my marriage and another one is this baby. Um, very briefly, just to share the testimony about this baby, God promised me about this child in 2015, um, four months after we got married, in August of 2015. And when God told me that, I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't I don't foresee that happening anytime soon, you know? And it's not something that I actively thought about so much, but um, it's just natural for people to ask once you're married after a few months, after a few years, especially when immediate family members have friends or, you know, immediate um, friends have children and all of those things. They're like, why haven't you had any children? Are you planning? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? I planned, trust me, after a couple of months, yes, we planned. We did everything we possibly could do. But everything came back as like, no, nothing is wrong. Everything is fine. We can't find out what's wrong. It came to a point where our only hope was um, scientific intervention, ultimately. We were going to do it in 2019 and then I was like, no, let's let's leave it for another couple of months. Let's leave it for another couple of months. And I pushed it for a year and a half. And when I eventually found out I was pregnant in August of 2020, it was purely because I had an expensive pregnancy kit, one of those things that says how many weeks and everything, the clear blue one. I had an expensive one that was expiring already. In fact, it already expired a couple of days before I used it. 
and I just didn't have the heart to throw it out. That's how long I had it. I had it for four years and it even expired and I only found out because I was clearing out my drawers and I didn't have the heart to throw it out and I just tested and I came back as positive. And I was like, what? <laughs> and Lakshman and I were in a shock for a couple of days, you know, and it's like we were wearing our heart on our sleeves and we just didn't really know and we didn't even tell our family until 12 weeks. We didn't tell anyone until after 12 weeks. Not because we doubted, but because it, it, it was so difficult for us to believe that we worked so hard for five years prior to that and nothing happened. Every time I tried, every time I tested expectantly, nothing happened. But when I didn't expect it at all, it happened so easily, so smoothly. And throughout my pregnancy, even this morning, Lakshman was saying, you've done really well. You and the baby have done really well. And I'm like, I did have general aches and pains with pregnancy. Things change. Everything changes. It, it did happen, you know, but there was no other complications and nothing that I would point out and say, this was really tough. And, you know, I struggled through, through it. I had tiredness. I had, I had a lot of things, nausea and all of those stuff, but I just took it as part and parcel of how life is and it it was smooth throughout and it still is smooth um none of my midwives or my doctors are concerned about anything at all with regards to myself and the baby i have an anterior placenta which means i won't be able to feel the baby so much however this boy has been super active and very very responsive to both of us and i'm like how did that even happen? <laughs> At 12 weeks when I found out my interior, my placenta was in front, I was a little bit concerned. In fact, I was very upset that I won't be able to feel the baby as much. But I I just forgotten about the placenta now because he's that active. Throughout, I've not really planned so much. I still, I'm 36 weeks tomorrow. I still haven't got a proper birth plan. My mom was talking to someone last night and then she was asking me, have you got this sorted out? Have you planned this? Have you planned that? And everything, I'm like, no. <laughs> I've got zero threshold towards pain. I can't take any pain. If you flick me a little bit, I will be sore for a couple of hours. I'm, I'm like that, you know? And I'm like, no, I have no plans. We'll just wait and see. For some reason, I seem to be taking everything so easily. It's just, it's not normal. And I recognize that it's not normal for me to be so relaxed and calm about something that I am not prepared for physically or mentally or that I've not experienced and I know this is truly truly from God um yeah I mean, there are one or two things that terrifies me like feeding the baby and nappy changing and carrying the baby I've, I've not actually carried a newborn baby before I've probably carried a couple of newborn babies a handful of times that's it Every time I am handed a newborn baby, I'm like a statue. I don't know how to lift the baby myself. I don't know how to give the baby back to the person. So I sit and I'm ready and Lakshman will pick the baby up and give the baby to me. That's how it has been with all of my nieces and nephews and even Joel, I think. Um, yeah, Joel was one of the babies that I went to visit a week after he was born. And I just couldn't move because I don't know how to move with, with the newborn baby. I have my worries and my concerns but yet i'm like okay we will just learn as we go it's fine it's not a problem <laughs> we'll learn as we go and i felt god's presence throughout right from the very beginning until today and i know even in the days to come in the future and everything our families have been supportive although they're not here they're extremely upset that they are not able to do anything but lakshman's just taken over everything i'm the kind of person who organizes and plans i, I plan my meal for the whole week i cook over the weekend for the whole the week i plan and organize all of the cooking and everything and um literally even if lakshman wants to do something on his own I don't allow him to because I want things to be done my way and then I ask him when I need help with certain things but ever since I was pregnant he's taken over everything I handed over the entire kitchen to him and I'm like do whatever you want to do <laughs> it doesn't bother me he cooks every single day he cleans he does everything and I'm like yeah you can do it he, he just stepped up without even me asking to be honest I only thought that he will be a lot more helpful without me asking but he's just done he's gone way above and beyond my own expectations in everything um yeah and i'm really thankful to have such wise friends ever since we came to e5 that was one thing that 
was really obvious to us in this church especially we have friends who are not only friends but who are really wise friends and always concerned always praying over us always you know looking out for us in times that we least expect it thank you so much for doing that for me and lakshman and now the baby that is to come thank you so much for always thinking about us for always praying for us and making time for us just it it's always a thought that um my one of my love language or my biggest love language is always quality time and thoughtfulness and is just i am so full because you know i'm getting that from all of you thank you thank you so much for everything thank you for sharing for me it's really good to share and it's good really in the sense just to hear how you're not actually over planning for this baby i don't know about that bit but this sounds really good in the sense because you know that if you're not over planning in the sense that you're just leaving it you remember a couple of weeks back when i'm pastor steve was doing the prayer about when you relinquish and leave everything to god that to me i've always found quite hard because it's lack of not being in control but that is how god wants it to be because if you do that you know that what happens is is in god's hands that is will will be done so that's wonderful to hear that from you i'm thinking is that it's like when i actually come chat to laxman about this he said yes and i said we will organize it around you and i'm thinking i've still got to make sure i send you the text which is why i sent you a text and you said you didn't know anything about it but i think that is how you need to leave it with god because god wants you to leave it with him and i think it's harder said than done so it's wonderful to hear and with regards to when you mentioned just now about birth plans i remember i had a birth plan because i didn't want any i didn't want any pain and i had this beautiful birth plan and what happened is dominic came a week early we just switched a brand new um red voxel gti <laughs> i went into labor and ken was more worried about i'm going to spoil the seating of his car he had to get me to the bri and when I got to the BRI, it was five, yeah, ten, no, ten to five in the morning, and I had to wait till the let, they let me into the maternity unit, and then I promptly had Dominic on the floor of the waiting room. They didn't even get me to the labour room, and Ken was looking at me like, "Esther, what are you doing?" Ken was like, "Totally, Esther, do not give birth now," <laughs> and before I knew it. Dom was out, caught in my knickers in the waiting room of the BRI maternity room. That was my birth story. So I'm just trying to tell you, in regards, I planned everything. Dom didn't wait. A, she was a week early. B, it was like, woof. I didn't have any gas in here. I didn't have any tears. I didn't have anything. Nothing at all. Don was born in that way. So to me, by the time I got to the room, they were going, "Are you the one who had the baby in the waiting room?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> so it was one of the most embarrassing times of my life. And really, truthfully, when I look back at it, when you say about even birth plans, birth plans sounded wonderful. So, ask anything else or contribute in any way? Yeah. I'm just going to say something about breastfeeding and Joanna and Hannah will know because I've advised them to ignore what is out there that it only takes two weeks. It does not take two weeks. It does not at all. You could be lucky if it's eight weeks that you're okay. You can go past eight weeks and it's still not okay. So again, take it a day at a time. And your best friend will be the expensive purple cream. Can't remember. Hannah and Joanna, what was it called again? That's no. That's it. I'll put it in a group. It's expensive, but it's worth it. It's yeah. worth every penny. Don't even try it without the purple cream. It is just <laughs> not worth it. Oh, also, yeah. sorry, Jimmy, there is quite a, there's a fantastic breastfeeding support group in Patchway. So, um, like, literally, I don't think me and Joel would have made it without them. And they are still going and they're really good. So um, I'll send you the details. There's also a really good Facebook group if you're on Facebook, Bristol Breastfeeding Mummies, which has loads of advice 
I got all my knowledge from there. So that's a very good one too. So tell me, do you want to open your presents now or do you want us to pray? Shall we pray first? If you can pray first, yeah. Right, okay. Father God, we just want to thank you for Chumi and Latchman, Father Lord. You've brought them through this for such a time as this, Father Lord. Even as Father Lord, she is approaching her um, EDD and her, 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 her Labor Day, Father, we just want to pray that, you know, you go through with her, Father Lord, that she delivers like the Hebrew remain, Father Lord. That even as she goes through it, Father, she will not feel the pain, that your spirit will be with her there, Father. She will have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Even as she's had peace throughout this period, your, your word says that you keep a perfect, in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on you, Father Lord, that she will continue to experience that peace in a whole new way Father Lord we thank you Father Lord that even as the baby comes the baby will unite them together as a family that the baby will bring so much joy Father that they'll forget everything every other every other thing that has cost them maybe challenges in the past or whatever it was father lord that the baby will come with so much joy will come with so much peace will come with love father lord they will know a new level of love peace and joy in their home like never before father we thank you because you will other her steps even as a mom that her maternal instincts father lord will speak for itself father lord even as she's listened to all this wonderful advice father lord that the spirit would the holy spirit will be her helper even throughout this period father we thank you even for this baby we thank you father because we know it's going to be what's the weight father lord we thank you holy spirit i will pray my god that even the remaining days and weeks of the journey will be a smooth one father lord we thank you father lord for latchman that even as a baby comes father lord he would also sometimes it's very easy for the mother to bond with the baby and forget about the husband but father lord that they will come three of them will come together as a whole family father lord and they will be stronger in unity in the mighty name of jesus thank you father we believe father lord that even your hand is in this throughout the journey father lord and we know my god that in your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore even your presence in that home will make a whole lot of difference in jesus name we pray amen lord i just want to thank you that even as chimmy and latchman were in their mother's wounds you planned them to be this child's parents lord i thank you that no one will know, no one on this earth will know that child as intimately as they know him, Lord. So I just pray that that they would just, um, they would just take comfort and confidence in that. But Lord, they would also remember that nobody, even, nobody knows him as well as you do. So I pray that they would turn to you for advice whenever they need it. You are the perfect parent, the perfect father. And I just pray that they would, they would learn from you. Um, but Lord, I also pray that this would be an opportunity for them to learn from their son um, about the love that you have for them. That has been such a precious lesson I have learned from my children and from the love that I just just had for them. It's just how that is a pale comparison to your love for us. And it's been that's been such an amazing learning experience. And I just pray that upon them i pray protection physically over chimmy's body healing um after the birth and and you know protection over the baby as it's born and strength for latchman it sounds as though he is rising up to the challenge more than you know we could ever hope for or imagine but lord i just pray strength and wisdom for him too and just a real blessing over the whole family amen Come Holy Spirit, we thank you Lord, come Holy Spirit, we welcome you Holy Spirit into this place, we lean on you, we depend on you, Father we thank you for this amazing testimony, we thank you for this life, we thank you that you are the giver of life. And we thank you, Father God, that you are with Chumi. You are for her and not against her. 
I thank you that you are great and you are worthy of all praise. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you will continue to surround Chumi and Laxman in your peace. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will go before them regarding the birth, the safe delivery of their son. Father, we know that you hold all things. We know that you are in control. And I just pray for this couple that they will keep their eyes fixed upon you, fixed upon your word, knowing who you are. You are faithful, Jesus. You know, Chumi, as um, Catherine was uh, praying for you, um, I really, um, I really think that, that uh, there's a song that I had as Catherine was um, praying, and it's an old hymn, and it's called "Great Is Thy Faithfulness," and I believe that will be your testimony. That will be your song. Great is thy faithfulness, and maybe later you can look at the words. But I believe as you go into this, um, that will be your song. And, you know, I just pray and speak a blessing over you, Chimmy. And I just pray for the power and the presence of the God, of, of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit to be with you. And I pray in these last few weeks before you give birth, that you will have sleep, you will have rest, that God will continue to give you peace. But I just pray that and I just know it's even that I pray I know that he will go before you that he will make a way because he is a God that we know to be miraculous he does things unusual but we trust him so father we just want to thank you for what you're going to do and what you are doing in Jesus name Jessica, that was the song that I sang um, for Phoebe. So I gave birth to Phoebe and that night it was just me and her alone on a bank holiday. We had the whole world to ourselves and that was the hymn that I sang to me and that hymn has stayed with me and great is thy faithfulness is so true when you're a mom. Every day God is faithful and um, it's not really a prayer as such, it's, it's that I know God has put everything in place for you. I know because I've been there, that from the medical team, from the person who gives the anaesthetic if you need it, from the person who gives you the toast and the tea in the morning, I know that God has put everything in place. And what I pray is that you will, your faith in God will deepen. Your faith will go to the next level because this season in your life, your relationship with God will change. And I pray that you would just step into that, just so smoothly, just step into that new season that God has already rolled out. He planned it before you were born, that you were going to be a mom. And so I just pray that you will just relax in his presence, relax in the knowledge that he has got everything in control. Hannah is right, you will go through extremes, you will go from, oh my goodness, this is amazing, to oh my goodness, this is crazy and scary. But in every extreme, he is the same, he is the same yesterday, today and forever. So hold on to that steadfastness of God, that he will never change, even though your world is changing, he never changes. And we can just hold on to that great faithfulness that Anishka said and that I sang that time when I had my first baby and I was like oh my goodness but I can say you are faithful and so I just pray that over you today Amen Lord God we just pray for the next few weeks um, as Jimmy um, prepares to give birth Lord God we just thank you for the wonderful peace you've given her in this pregnancy that we know has come from you Lord and we just pray that peace continues um, beyond the birth and into those first few weeks and months that seem so chaotic and you don't 
really know what you're doing but lord we just pray that peace would so come would overcome everything every fear every situation where she's not quite sure what the baby wants that no matter what she would come back to you and 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 find that peace from you lord god and we just pray she should be able to find those nuggets of time amidst the chaos to spend and and come back to you lord god be you know, that's sometimes really hard to do when you have a new baby Lord but we just pray you'd provide those nuggets of time where she can she can come and be with you as well and to find that peace amongst the kids Lord God we just praise you and we thank you for this this life you've given into that family Lord God and we just pray for that that boy as he grows up he'll grow up to to, to know you and to love and serve you all his life Lord God we thank you in Jesus name this incredible testimony, Lord God, this incredible journey that you have taken to me and Max and on, Lord, that, you, that we arrive at this point, Lord, and Father, we thank you for this new season, and Lord God, Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, Lord, that you have truly gone before them, Lord, and that you have made the way, Lord, you have made the way, Father, and Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for that promise that you gave to me, those years ago, Lord, and just how you have worked in that situation. Father, we know it will be a testimony for years to come that will bless others, will, that will remind her, Lord, Lord, it's, um, you know, it's through letting go and trusting you, Lord God, that so often that you break forth in our lives, Father. But Father, I just particularly pray for her now as she's coming up to the time to give birth, Lord God. Father, I pray, Lord God, Father, that it will go smooth, that it will go well with her, Lord God. Father God, I pray, Lord, for healing and restoration of her body. And Father, I just pray for peace as she goes through that uh, journey, Lord God. And Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you have called her to be a mom for such a time as this. And Father God, I pray, Lord, that there will just be such an incredible love between them, an incredible love between her, um, Lakshman, and the baby, Lord God. Father, I pray it will be a love that we'll see them through. Lord God, it will be a love so strong. And Father God, I thank you, Lord. Lord, and I pray, Lord, that, you know, I, I pray over, actually, that first year, that you'll be... Um, surprised at the amount of peace it will be supernatural it will not be chaotic it, like there will just be a, a peace that transcends all of that and a rest in God a rest in God where it just comes so naturally and so delightfully to you and so father I pray that over uh, Chimmy over that house and yeah father I just commit them into your hands and Lord I know she's going to make a great mum they're going to be great parents and so father I thank you for your hand upon them Lord I just pray for your glory to continue to surround them and this little one in the name of Jesus Oh, Heavenly Father, I just pray. As all of us is coming to you, Lord, I just ask that you continue just to cover Trini and Luxman as they embark on the journey that you've planned for them, Lord. Heavenly Father, I ask that you continue just to be with them through the birth, through every situation that you come against them, Lord. I ask that you just continue with your Holy Spirit, just to give them that peace, give them that love, give them that continuation that you are faithful. And Lord, you know they faith, you know they heart. And I ask that you continue just to bless them as they actually impart on this new experience. And you know, in the Bible it says that, you know, your sons are your inheritance and they're the gift from you, Lord. They're the gift. And Lord, I just ask that you continue just to give her a covering, give Latsman and Chummy a covering. And the way that both of them are just approaching this, Lord, I just ask that, you know the timing, you know, like we all think, yes, we can plan and yes, we know what's in front. But Lord, you do. And Lord, I ask that you continue to let them just remain in that peace, remain in that steadfastness, remain in that faithfulness of knowing that they serve a father that loves them, a father that cares for them, a father that cares for every detail of their lives. And Lord, you know, as all of us is praying, you think about the technology, but Lord, my hand is just resting on Chummy at the moment. I want her to know, feel the touch that I feel that God is saying, Chummy, 
I'm here. Show me, I'm with you. And the same with that, like, you know, when Laxman and her are just in that space, Lord, I ask that you continue just to give them the, that peace, that continuation of love from you. Oh, Heavenly Father, you and John saying about, you know, when you have a child, that love is, um, you can't actually explain the love you feel for your child. But God, I know you love us more and more more than we can ever comprehend and lord i just ask that you continue continue just to be with them in every step of the way oh heavenly father i also thank you thank you that we can just come alongside and just be with her through this time thank her for sharing some part of her time with us lord but heavenly father i just thank you i thank you that you are in each of our lives in each of the situation and i just ask that each of us just know that you are a loving, faithful Father. Amen. Um, I just have a scripture on it. <laughs> it's, like, it's totally, um, if it doesn't fit, just, just, just leave it to me, okay? I'm just kind of putting it out there. I just really feel it on my heart. And it goes against what we're praying, really. <laughs> but it's just um, be anxious for nothing. So I don't know if there's an aspect or an element, or maybe for that's in for the days to come. But just that scripture to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in everything, make your petitions and your requests be made known unto the Lord. So I don't know, like if there's a little something or something that's concerning you or an aspect, or maybe that's something you need for the future. But just to, I just felt to, to share it because it just was laid heavy on my heart. So I hope that blesses you and you keep that one at hand. <laughs> okay, Bless you. All right, I'm going to open this one. Who is this from? Is this Karina? Yeah, that's me. Uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. It's got the days on it. Thank you. <laughs> That's very nice. I heard you need a lot of bibs, don't you? Yeah. A lot of bibs and best. Something else. Oh, wow. <laughs> Cute. I've been doing laundry for some of the things that I've already bought the last two days. Every time we look at that drying, we're like, it feels so surreal. I never really imagined that at all. That's for you. you uh, thank you. Pamper. Pamper. <laughs> Thank you very much. I got a kangaroo. We did an earlier scan. We went to a private scan at 16 weeks to find out the gender because Lakshman and I were so impatient. We just didn't want to wait until NHS scan at 20 weeks. So we got a kangaroo from them with the baby's heartbeat in it. And we chose a kangaroo because the boy was already kicking so much from his first scan that we saw and we were like, okay, I'm taking a kangaroo. This one reminds me of that. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, that's really great. Thank you. Oh. Reasons to be a proud dad. Oh, see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lakshman's, he's been doing his share of reading and a lot of things. <laughs> 